Hello and welcome to TCM Live. That's right, it's Teen Christian Ministries Live. It's where we take uh, the issues that, that, you know, pester you teenagers out there. It's just kind of sound like, kind of pester you teenagers out there. And, and uh, we, we wrap them up, put a nice little pretty bow on them, and um, we, we, we talk about them, we present them, we pray for you guys. We, we just have a wonderful time. And once again, joining me is the fabulous, the wonderful, the one and only... Lindsay Briard Sykes from Life Choices in Monroe. Thank you for having me. I've just enjoyed being with you these past two weeks and yeah, it's just wonderful. talking about the great, exciting topics of dating, sex, relationships. You know. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. You know, there are a lot of different ways that you can get in touch with us. Uh, uh, the best way is to go to our website, tcmlive.com, where uh, you can hit us up on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, Twitter. You tweet? Yeah. You yeah. can even tweet. We, we tweet. <laughs> uh, you know, we really, for TCM Live, I know we have the cool little symbol, but we really need something like that little bird they have. For, yeah. I wish like I could Twitter. do shadow puppets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, neither. yeah. But, um, yeah, we need our own little symbol. And any of you out there that are artists that are work free, because, you know, we, we broke. It's ministry. <laughs> yeah, it's ministry. We broke. We don't do this for the money. We do it for the streets of gold in heaven. Um, but there are different ways to get in touch with you. You can send us an email. We love getting emails. You know, I, I opened up the morning time, and I'm just overjoyed when someone sends us an email. Not even necessarily to me. It could be to TC or any of the staff. Yeah. In fact, you could send one to TCM for Lindsay, even though she's got her own contact information. It would just be good to see sure, one. Sure, and you know, email's great because sometimes you have a question and you just want to yeah. answer. It's just an easy way to connect. And yeah, or if you've got a topic for the show even. You know, oh, that would be great, we're, yes. we're, we're not We're not picky in that way. I mean, if you've sure. got something that you want us to hit on, you know, let us know. Uh, we'll definitely do it. All right, well, we're going to open up in prayer. Lindsay, would you mind opening us up in prayer? Sure, I'd cool. love to pray. Father God, we come before you tonight. We just ask that you would bless this time together. Lord, help us to grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Lord. And we, I just pray for everyone watching tonight, Lord, that you would bless their life in a special way and just draw us closer to you and thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for that. Sure. That was a wonderful prayer. I felt the Holy Spirit all the way over here. <laughs> well, right. All right. Well, our resource spotlight, again, of course, for, for this week is the same as last week. Is, um, you want to take a guess what it is? Life Choices. <laughs> That's right. It's Life Choices. Of Monroe. We just appreciate you inviting us because we just love, you know, we much rather sit here and talk like this than have people come in the center. You know, we'd love to talk about relationships and making good choices with your sexuality on this yeah. side rather than sitting in our office waiting on a pregnancy test because oh, yeah. that's what we do at Life Choices. We do free pregnancy tests, ultrasound, material assistance for new moms, and we have counseling and uh, we talk about abstinence, and education, things like that. Yeah, so, Lindsay, <laughs> basically what you're saying here is this is preventive maintenance, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> have you ever looked at it that way? Yeah. yeah. Just you probably have. You're you're pretty smart. <laughs> you know, preventive maintenance. So you you girls out there, uh, you know, hope you hope you're paying attention to this because this is this is some stuff that uh, we talked about last week. We're going to be talking about this week. Uh, guys too, of course. But uh, but ladies, you really have in the relationship world, you really have more uh, more power than what you think. Absolutely. And you know, God has empowered you to be your own person. So our resource spotlight of the week, of course, is Life Choices. And like we said last week, pay attention to that name. Life Choices. you got some stuff going on in your life. You need some help. You need a place to turn. They are on our resources page. Um, uh, Lindsay is not one of the type of people that uh, you just kind of see on TV or you hear on the radio or whatever that, that isn't, like, real. Like, like, she's not unobtainable as far as being able to talk to or to reach um, and yeah, I, we love we love talking to people. Yeah, if you're sitting out there tonight watching this and you you think you might be pregnant, or maybe you know somebody who's pregnant, or maybe you're just really struggling with your relationships and you don't feel like you have anywhere else to turn, well, we would love to talk to you at Life Choices, and that's what um, that's what we do. And everything is free and confidential. Cool, and I like that because it's good that you say that because I mean, think about it. Uh, guys and girls out there, how many things do you know of in this world that's still free? Exactly. And here's the biggest thing. Finding something that's free is one thing, but finding something that's confidential. You know, and really it shouldn't be this way, Lindsay, but you know, that's really, uh, the world should not be the way it is now. The body of Christ was actually set up 
uh, and, and y'all listen, it's pretty cool. You know, you read in Acts back in the early church, uh, you know, the, the scripture says that they were all of one accord. They were all of one mindset. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, like what you were saying, you can really kind of apply that. Because you take the, the, the quote, real Christians, the people that were true believers that were trying to do the best they could. And since we're talking about relationships tonight, you know, we're talking about relationships and sex, but uh, we're talking about relationships tonight. They had strong Christian relationships, which means that they didn't, it's not like, say, me and Lindsay were back then, and, you know, I go up to her and tell her something private, and I go up to them telling them something private. Go up to, it wasn't necessarily like that, but it's one of those things where you had a lot of people around you that if I had something that I really needed to share, I could go to somebody like Lindsay, I could say, look, I, I really need to talk to you, I really need some help, I want to confide something in you. And guess what? Here's the crazy thing, when the body of Christ works the way it's supposed to, you can go to someone with full faith and confidence knowing that they are not going to share that information with anybody else. Now, of course, there are, there are things that, you know, like if I came up to you and said, Lindsay, I just have to admit that I just killed my cousin. Right. You know, that legally, you know, morally, you got to have to right. tell somebody, you know. Or if I say, hey, I just put a shock collar on my four-year-old and gave him some Benadryl and threw him right. in the closet, you know. Yeah. I didn't really. No. But, you know, you'd have to kind of call the cops on stuff like that. But, you know, when the body of Christ works the way it's supposed to, things like that with your organization that's so wonderful that it's free and it's confidential. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that that stands out to people. But in our society, it really shouldn't. That should be the way that we operate in the body of Christ. Especially with topics like this, dealing with sexuality and relationships and things like that. You know that a lot of us, you know, those are kind of private topics and we might not feel comfortable talking to parents, you know, maybe teachers, and if they don't have the time, you know. So if you need a safe place, that's what Life Choices is there for. That's wonderful. Um, thank you guys for what you're doing. We love what we do. Talking about... Uh, Sex and relationships, you know, uh, we'll start out talking about relationships and we'll kind of ease on towards, yeah, towards, the, big S -word. Yeah, towards the towards the sex talk. But um, you've got some stuff to share with us on relationships, right? Mm -hmm. I do. I've got the five P's. These are our great um, P's of being in a relationship, you know, because it's, it's just important to know that, you know, you can just start where you are, you know, that maybe not everybody has seen a great model of marriage in their home. You know, of course, we believe in saving sex for marriage because yeah. that's God's way, you know. And so um, we have these five P's that can help you keep that commitment and maybe, you know, think for yourself about setting some boundaries in your life. And the first one is to be prepared. That when you're dating and looking at relationships, you know, you want to be prepared. You want to guard your mind. You want to make wise decisions with your dating choices. You know, we talked about that last week a little bit on, um, you know, what you put into your mind comes out in your yeah. life. And so being prepared just helps you to think now. You know, just like go ahead right now, just on this random night, you know, write down some things that you think would lead toward you know, poor sexual choices, you know, about putting yourself in situations, you know, that you want to stay away from. Second P is to be picky, that you want to be picky about picky. what, yeah, uh, not, not nose picky. Oh, okay, okay. Picky is, and choosy, because you want to be choosy about the people that you choose to date. You know, yeah. that you don't have to date everybody, that um, you can have a guideline for yourself. And go ahead and write that down about the kind of person that you want to be with. You know, trust is a foundational issue in relationships. So, somebody that's trustworthy, somebody that, you know, treats you with respect, that yeah. listens to you, that, um, you know, doesn't lie. Those are things. So, you want to be picky. So, you want to be prepared and go ahead and think about how, you know, what you want situations you do and do not want to put yourself in. Be picky about the people that you're around and be positive. This is a time in your life when you should be making great memories, you know, yeah. that uh, there's so much pressure as a teenager that just don't add to it with unhealthy relationships. You know, if you don't want to date anybody, don't date now. Just to make lots of friends and make great memories. You know, just be positive and have a blast with this time in your life. And be powerful. And that is taking responsibility for where you are. You know, if you just think, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. Life's just going to happen to me. You know, and that's where you get into a danger zone. That you want to... Um, you want to be powerful. You want to be the person that says, hey, this is not, we're not going there. You know, your parents aren't home. We're not going to go lay on the couch and watch a movie together because, 
you are you're taking responsibility for that so you're going to be prepared you're going to be picky you're going to be positive you're going to be powerful and the fifth thing is to be proud of who you are because you're the only you in the entire history of the world that god has a particular plan for you. You like those peas. Huh? Yeah, I like the peas. You want to be proud yeah. of the person that you are and, you know, the track that God has you on, that you don't want to derail that because mm -hmm. sex outside of marriage has derailments to it, you know, that mm -hmm. there are issues. You know, you, you might not get pregnant. Obviously, if you're a guy, you're not going to, you're not going to actually be pregnant. Um, even though, you know, statistics tell us one in five teenage girls in Louisiana will be pregnant before she graduates from high school. So wow. you might not get pregnant. You may not get a sexually transmitted disease, even though one in three 18, 25 year olds have a sexually transmitted disease. You may not, but you will 100% of the time pay an emotional consequence. And we see people every day that are like, oh, well, you know, that aren't in our office. We see teenagers that say, what is that really? You know, I, I like sex, I like having sex, and I don't feel like I'm paying a price for it. But at some point in your life, there is an emotional price to pay for it. And we see people with life choices waiting on the results of a pregnancy test that just beg us, you know, do y'all go into schools? Please go tell other students to not be in my shoes. You know, do whatever you can do not to sit here because, you know, there are emotional consequences of having sex outside of marriage. You can feel depressed and angry and you know, there, there's just so many changes going on in your life that you just don't want to add depression. I mean, those are like negative, weighty, mm -hmm. weigh you down things, you know. You want to be positive. Again, you want to make great memories. And that does, that's not going to lead you down that path. And I think that, that that's a, what you're talking about, that's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration. Our culture is built around being strong. Mm -hmm. Our culture is, is uh, built around taking charge. Mm -hmm. But the only problem is a, a lot of us, guys, girls, you know, you got to admit it, a lot of us, we don't use uh, common sense and we don't use our right. spiritual sense when doing that. You're talking about the, the downside, the negative sides, as far as, you know, being depressed, uh, feeling bad, the mm -hmm. negative consequences. The, you said it over and over, which I'm glad you did, uh, and I, I hope that you called that out there. Um, when she said it the couple of times she did, the emotional toll that it takes on you. We were just talking uh, last week before the program, we were talking about uh, specific situations that we've seen in people's lives to where sometimes uh, with young men and with young ladies, uh, something will happen. You've got something like maybe drug use, you've got depression, abortion, things like that. And, it, and I'm sure that you, you come from more of a statistical background on that. You would know more about it than, than me, but I've seen it as far as um, just because you think you're dealing with something now or you think that you're shoving something deep down inside of you and you're over it, you can move on, but you know you haven't dealt with it, that it will come back years from now. I mean, it could come back tomorrow or next week, but a lot of times with a lot of you, um, it, it's going to be years from now. You're pro you may be married, you might have kids. And then all of a sudden you have this, this, this stuff, this thing that you thought that you'd shove so deep down inside of you that it was never going to come back out about an abortion or drug use or, or whatever. And all of a sudden it, it comes back up and it, it just floors you and it just mm -hmm. levels you. And we don't, we don't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Lindsay deals with stuff like that all the time with people that are, they know they need help they just don't quite know how to verbalize it. Right. And, you know, the, it is heavy emotions that, you know, a lot of times that, we, you know, we don't want to deal with. And, you know, this isn't an easy thing. Because you know? if it was easy, everyone would be doing this. And I think that's important to remember that it's going to take commitment. It's going to take dedication and perseverance in this. Because as a culture, more and more every day we're bombarded with sexual messages, you know. And, I mean, we've got... You know, now we've got Lady Gaga, and we, we're like out just past promiscuity. We're into mm -hmm. sexual experimentation, just rampant pornography that's so accessible, you know, with so many different things. So it's not easy to do, and you have to kind of know that going into it, but it's worth it because we're not saying say no to sex forever, put on your Amish clothes, and you're never going to have sex. <laughs> it's really saying a bigger yes to God's plan for your life. And if you have that yes in your heart, you know, that's all that God asks for is to just have a willing and obedient heart, you know, and just have that yes in your heart. 
and God will take that and bless that beyond what you could ever imagine because, you know, let's be frank, anyone can have a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am sexual yeah. experience. Casual sex does not communicate God's true plan for sexuality because no. sex within marriage communicates total trust, acceptance, unconditional love. Those are things that, you know, you might be sitting out there thinking, well, yeah, I'm all about that. Trust, you yeah. know, full trust, full acceptance of who you are, unconditional love, cherishing. That's what God's plan for sexuality is. Yeah. And you just don't get that outside of marriage. And a lot of times, uh, especially when we're teenagers, we like to lie to ourselves. We like mm -hmm. to say we know we're seeking that because it's in our heart. We're wired that way as humans. So, you know what, guys, girls? Sex is okay. It's okay to be wired for sex, to have that desire to, to, to have sex, you know, especially, you know, your body's going through changes, all that good stuff. It, it's okay to experience that it's a, because, I mean, it's part, it's natural part of growing up. But it's when you act upon it before you're ready because your your body is maturing, but you've got to let your your mind and your emotions catch up <laughs> with your body. You've got to be... You got to come to a place where you are mentally, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually ready to have sex, which means in the confines of marriage. Right. And you know what, what's great is because it is it is totally normal. You know, like I said, it's not easy. So it's normal to have these desires and feelings in your heart and. Um, you know, want to be with somebody, but you know, let's let's take that energy at this point in your life, and let's put that in discovering more about who you are, because you are, you're still growing, you're still developing, you're still, you know, figuring out what your gifts and talents are, you know, maybe you have some gift of athleticism, you know, I was telling you earlier that I was behind the door in heaven when God was passing out sports <laughs> talent, because, probably talking, because I don't have sports talent, um, but, you know, maybe you are gifted in that way. Well, go be a great athlete. You know, dedicate yourself to that. Or maybe you're an artist. Or maybe you enjoy music or reading. And, um, you know, just find that special gift. Because God, you know, it says that. I think it's in First Corinthians. He talks about that each one is a special gift from God inside them. You know, and we all have that. You have that. Even if you think, well, I have no special gift. <laughs> well, yes, you do. And this is a wonderful time to just... Use that energy that you have with the sexual feelings. Use that and drive it into your talents and yeah. your discovering who you are and at some, this point in your life. You know, something else that we were talking about as well, uh, when we were talking about uh, planning this particular uh, webisode, you yeah, know, I love that word, mm -hmm. webisode. Um, when we were planning this particular webisode, one thing that we were, we were talking about was and you brought it to my attention it's one of those things you know it's kind of one of those duh moments you know mm -hmm. but it's true you know all the talks of, of sex that we have you know all the stuff that that we talk about the information that that we pass on one thing that i think really resonated with me and i'm sure it will with our uh, viewers is this a lot of times when we talk about sex we're still looking at it old school as far as and i don't mean that in a necessarily a negative way or an old-fashioned like everybody's married and this and that mm -hmm. I'm talking about realistically 20 30 years ago old school mm -hmm. as far as you just had to worry about abstinence you just had to worry about you know sex outside of marriage right. but now like what you were saying it's a whole different ball game isn't it it really is and you know again we're saying it's not easy you know that's why you, we have resources like this there's resources like life choices so you can know that you're not alone and there's accountability if you want it because it is a whole different ball game with um, the internet and the media out there, you know, what um, music artists are putting out, you know, it's very explicit lyrics and, you know, it may be um, deviant sexual things, you know, like between people and animals, things that God specifically yeah. says no to. Or, you know, maybe you're questioning your sexuality, if you're, you know, how do you know if you're gay or not? Or, you know, Lady Gaga's got a big Born This Way um, song, you yeah. know, that things like that are just the accessibility of pornography is so um, prevalent. And it's, um, it, it is a huge, huge battle for that. Well, um, I've got a scripture here mm -hmm. from uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, this is one that I saved specifically for this show right. on this. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. And it says this. It's talking about sexual sin. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to this first part. It's really cool. You don't hear this very often in the Bible. Run away from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. 
Or don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. You know, Lindsay, to that, that's those scriptures right there, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, it really sort of, if you read between the lines, so to speak, it, it, it sort of ties the whole gospel. Do you like that word? It, it, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sound like one of the little robots my wife had that would clean the floor, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. But it really ties the whole gospel story together. If you read between lines, it's talking about run from sexual sin, stay away from sin. Because it, it, it so clearly affects your body, it affects your mood, it affects your actions, your thought processes. It says sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. And your body is a temple mm -hmm. to, your, to your holy God, to our holy God. And it says here, you do not belong to yourself. Well, what does that mean? God brought you, bought you, brought you. He brought you here to watch this show. Yes. But God bought you. With a high price. You know what that very high price was? That was Jesus Christ dying at Calvary. At Golgotha. The place of the skull. So, And the blood that he shed on the cross covers every sexual sin. Because, yes. you know, maybe there's somebody out there that's watching this thinking, I am so far removed from a virgin it's not even funny. You know, yeah. that maybe he's been down on some, some road. Or maybe you've had an abortion. Or maybe you're sitting there pregnant and you just think that you're all alone or that there is nothing that you could do worse. Well, when Jesus died on the cross, it covered that. You know, I just ask yeah. him for forgiveness of sins. That's that is all that he asks, you know, is just yeah. to ask for forgiveness, invite him to be your savior. And that covers that. And that verse too, I think it's great. That's run away. Doesn't yeah. say just like, hey, put it away, walk away from it, just ignore it. Run. Run away. Yeah. And that's literally you have to be that proactive about it. You're going to have to take that much control and run away from those situations. Yeah, because a lot of people usually think, yeah. I think it's in James where it talks about submit yourself therefore unto God, resist yes. the devil and he will flee from you. A lot of times we want to throw, and that's from the original King James Version. That's, you know, that's what Jesus right. spoke was King James. Right, yes, exactly. <laughs> no, but that actually it's from the King James Version. But um, I like the way, the poetic way it sounds. But you know, a lot of times we want to throw that up in, in our minds and our hearts because again, you guys remember I say this a lot, everything in the body of Christ is connected. We have that strength mentality. So we think that anything that comes along, we're supposed to stand strong, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, on this particular thing right here, God's saying, run away from sexual sin. That's deep. You know, the last verse in here, I couldn't help but think about this, the last part of that was, so you must honor God with your body. When I read that, Lindsay, I couldn't help but think, that, you know, Paul's talking to the Corinthians here. Mm -hmm. um, he's talking to uh, many different people that was in the church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to assume, I know you've got to be careful when you assume things, but mm -hmm. it's safe to assume that he's probably, Lindsay, wouldn't you think he's talking to people here that probably have made some horrible mistakes? People that maybe had been pagans before, people that had done all kind of horrible, yeah, stupid, let's crazy spell things? that out too because it's not very different from what we're in. You know, in their pagan temples, they sacrificed, they had, you know, human sacrifices. Yeah. There were sexual things that they did in those temples, yeah. you know, that not unlike what we have going on yeah. in today's world. So, very much relatable to us. But so, yeah, I would definitely think he's talking yeah. about that. And so he's talking to the Corinthians here, and he's got this in mind that some of these people, man, their sins, it was just like, wow, y'all were horrible. Mm -hmm. But he's still saying right here, you must honor God with your body. And he's saying that to people that he knows in the past didn't honor God with their body. So those of you out here out there who, who watch our, our episodes, you've heard this stuff from youth group. I hope you're in a youth group. I hope you're in church. But you hear this stuff and you think, well, this isn't for me. What Lindsay's saying, you know, she's got some really good stuff and maybe my friends need to hear it. I don't know if I do. Yeah, you do. You need to be prepared because here's the thing. Again, everything connected. The information that you get here, if you're okay, you and God are cool, you're living life just great, you're, you're serving Him, you got all your ducks in a row, you're going to have a friend. You're going to have somebody that's going to come up in the next week, two weeks, next year, two years, that's going to need to know this information. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to us. clear up a rumor. Okay. Someone, we don't know, someone start rumor that oral sex is not really sex. Huh. huh. And that's not true. Oral sex huh. is sex. And the, you may not be able to get pregnant from having oral sex, 
but you can still get an STD in your mouth, down your throat. Now let's be let's be very about. clear. I, I'm not insulting our audience here, but I want you to to to, to clearly. You're talking about oral sex. Mm -hmm. You can get an STD. Yes. I want you to spell out what is an STD. An STD is a sexually transmitted disease. It's a disease that you get through um, through sexual contact. So you know, I'm not going to get it from a toilet seat in a public mm -hmm. bathroom. Um, but sexual contact. A lot of people will tell you, um, you know, here's some condoms, you'll have safe sex with that, but there's really no such thing as safe sex because you would have to wear like a scuba suit, like yeah. no skin showing your whole entire body. You know, condoms, a little bitty piece of latex, sorry, you know, it's not going to protect you. When the government um, first started, we're, we're kind of telling our mm -hmm. age here, when the ver government first started bringing out the whole safe remember it was right. safe sex at safe first sex. they called it safe sex yes um so and everybody that was from magic johnson the basketball player yeah. when he contracted hrv and that's how we got the safe sex myth was from the a lot of the aids epidemic coming through that we can have sex safely but they proved that condoms are not 100 percent no. you know it tells you on the box if you read the box <laughs> yeah it is and, and so but they've changed it to where they call it safer sex Right. So it's not safe, it's safer. Uh, all right, I want y'all to think about this, okay? Um, that's like taking, a, taking a, 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 a pistol, taking a revolver. It's got multiple chambers, you know. Mm -hmm. That's putting one bullet in it, and that's spinning it, and then pointing at the wall and shooting. That's a safer way mm -hmm. to shoot the gun. Because the odds of you catching something are what, one in... Six or something, you know. One in three has an Well, I don't. I'm just talking about the gun. Oh, and the but gun, in, yes. in this, in this, <laughs> in sexually transmitted diseases, disease. it's one in three. Yes. Wow. And then you know, you also have to take into consideration. Eighty-five percent of people who have an STD do not know that they have one. And if they did, I always think, why would they tell you? I mean, yeah. you know, they're, you're, you're in the heat of the moment. Why are they going to say, oh my gosh, look, I've had sex with sixteen other people, and not just sex. We're talking about sexual contact. Yeah. So, you know, things um, in today's world like oral sex or, you know, uh, just sexual touching, can um, you can get an STD from that. So that's very important. And people aren't going to be upfront and honest about that usually. So. Yeah. And so that's important that for if you are sexually active to go to the doctor because a lot of STDs are undiagnosed. Well, let me ask you something, Lindsay. Uh, in, in light of all of this, mm -hmm. Friends play a key role in all of our lives, but right, yes. especially being a teenager, and might I say being a youth pastor, mm -hmm. especially junior high girls. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, so any of the junior high and high school girls mm -hmm. that, 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 are, that are watching at home, uh, and, and the guys for that matter, we don't want to ever leave the guys out, mm -hmm. but um, how do we surround ourselves with good people? I mean, friendship-wise. And I think that is the biggest key to maintaining sexual purity in high school is the friends that you keep. Because they will lead you down a good path or they will lead you down a bad path. Like I did not date at all really until my senior year of high school and I could probably contribute a lot of that to the friends that I was around. I had great friends that we had a great time together. I mean there were guys and girls, you know, but we weren't dating, we were just having fun. And they were in youth group with me. You know, we went to each other's houses with our parents there, you know, did stuff with little brothers and little sisters kind of thing. Um, and I, I really think that as you get into junior high and high school, your friends could not be more crucial. The company that you keep, the people that you were around could not be more crucial. Yeah, and I think we talked, uh, we, we did, we talked last show about a lot of people wanting to date uh, the, the bad boys and, and stuff yes. like that. I've got a, a, a few of my youth over the years that are like that. You know, the girls have to date the bad boys. But I always, I always present it to them like this. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, all right, girls. You like the bad boys for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You think that, uh, you know, deep down inside, you think you can help them, you can rescue them, you can pull them up. There are very few cases where that might happen, but usually what's going to happen is when you reach down, you're consistently reaching down to help them up, they're going to pull you down mm -hmm. to where 
they are. Now that doesn't mean that you give up on people. You can still be friends with them. Right. Friends as far as uh, being in the appropriate situation. Like say you're friends at school and you're strong enough to where you can be around this person. You can minister to this person. Here's a good thing in case... Alright, let me stop the youth pastor and he's coming out here. <laughs> if you think that you can just keep being friends with the people you're friends with, uh, I want you to think about this. I I'm fine with that. You know, Not that I have any power over your lives, but I'm fine with that. But here's the thing. Can you open up your Bible? Uh, can you talk about God? Can you talk about theology? Uh, can you talk about your personal beliefs? Can you talk about doctrine? Can you talk about any of that stuff? Can you talk about God's plan for your life? And if you can, if you can open up to these people and you can sit down and you can talk about stuff like this, then that's okay. Then, then, then you can be around those people and uh, it's most likely going to be okay. But if you're like, well, I just, I don't, you know, they're, they're good friends. I, just, I can still be a Christian and be around them. Mm -hmm. Why are you hiding your Christianity? Because like what she's talking about, your friends, especially during your teenage years, your friends are key to keeping sexual purity, to making uh, positive, right decisions, to helping you uh, define your future. Because I had mm -hmm. friends, you know, when I was a teenager, I had friends that were the potheads and everything mm -hmm. like that. And that was a path that I eventually went down. Because... Your friends were doing it. You were around were doing the people it. you were around. I, yeah. had, I had friends, like I said, that I was blessed to have some very good friends. Yeah, and it wasn't a huge group of people. Maybe you just have one, you know. Mm -hmm. But I had... Um, you know, some of my girlfriends would say, like, um, you know, if I was around a guy that maybe is questionable, you know, that they would say, like, really, where is this going? What are you, what are you seeing here? You know, and that maybe I could hear that from them, that maybe I wasn't willing to listen to my parents about. You know, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm just, I'm just being honest. You know, oh, you yeah. think about your parents and you're like, well, I'm going to know all this stuff, you know. But sometimes friends, if you have the good godly friends, that they can keep you on that path, you can hear from them some things that you can't hear from your parents, you know, that, um, and that's why it's important because, you know, I've also had friends say that are like, hey, you do, you know, you're, you do what you want to do, you know, you're, yeah. you're getting grown up and you do that and that's just not, it doesn't keep you on a good path. But you know, they're talking about that too, um, what kind of friends are those really? I mean, yeah. you know, friends, that's one of the big deals that I tell people in my youth group. Um, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, because I get pretty, I guess what you might call chummy with some of them, but I'll tell them mm -hmm. I'm real quick when I see that happen. I'm not your friend. Mm -hmm. And then if you kind of look at me, I said, well, let me explain. I love you. I love you mm -hmm. with everything in me. And that's why I'm not your friend. I'm not the traditional uh, 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 friend as far as the way people, the, the way this culture defines mm -hmm. it. Because a friend will tell you what you want to hear. A friend does not want to speak up and tell you when you're wrong, right. that kind of thing. So, I'm no, I'm not your friend. I'm your youth pastor. I'm your pastor. Um, I, I'm not your friend. I love you mm -hmm. too much. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I love you too much to be your friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's the truth. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, I, my personality, I'm the type of person that if, if I can learn from your mistakes and not make a mistake, mm -hmm. then awesome. You know, that if you see me doing something, tell me. You know, because mm -hmm. I want to learn before I go down that road, you know. And my husband, he has a different approach, you know, that he, he we kind of have different stories and he's made mistakes in his life and everything that he felt like his, the way he was coming at life at that time, that, you know, it was like he had to make the mistakes to learn the lesson, you know. Yeah. And then looking back now, he'll say like, man, I wish that I had somebody in my life that cared enough about me to pull me by the neck and say, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? So maybe somebody needs to hear that tonight. What are you doing? Do you need to think about the relationships that you're in? You know, the choices that you're making yeah. with dating or, you know, we're talking about friends with benefits, you know. Yeah. Maybe you're being sexual with somebody you don't have a relationship with that it's just a friends with benefits kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I hate that term, you know. Right. We yeah, hate that term. Understand. But it's what, you know, it's what... It's the cool yeah. thing to say, you know, you want you want friends with benefits. Mm -hmm. But you thought what what kind of benefits? Sexually right. transmitted diseases. I can actually use this here in closing, uh, I actually use this and I, I use it a pretty decent bit, but I can actually use it because of the topic. I always tell people, you know, you always hear the youth, they always hear the teens that say, Well, I need to make my own mistakes. I need to yeah. make my I, I need to I need to go through all of that. Yeah. So I can actually I can actually apply this and it goes with what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you need to make your own mistakes, then go out and get AIDS. Go out and get gonorrhea. Go out and get syphilis. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? 
Why are you picking and choosing? You've heard me say this before. Why are you picking and choosing? If you have to make your own mistakes, does that mean you can learn from other people on some things, but you have to make your own mistakes on others? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think that you can listen to people like Lindsay. I think you can listen to the people around you and learn from their mistakes before you make your own. So, Lindsay, we have enjoyed, so much enjoyed, having you here. It's my pleasure. I don't want to, this is my first webisode experience, <laughs> so I've had the best time. Well, we look forward to having you back more often. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try to get her back more often. Yeah, so, here. tell you what, get on Facebook there, send us an email, whatever, let us know uh, what you thought. Um, go to our resources page, or what is your uh, web address there for Life Choices? LifeChoicesOfMonroe.com, and our phone number is 318-323-2200. Yeah, so if you're having uh, if you're having problems, or you've got a friend that's having some problems, uh, you need somebody to go to, check out uh, Lindsay and her crew over there at Life Choices Monroe. Uh, we thank you for being here with us tonight at TCM, and remember uh, our our motto here, and uh, I'm sure you'll agree with me for Life Choices: you're not alone. So. Join us next week for a, another wonderful webisode, and we wish each and every person out there a good night.